colic, constipation and dyschezia of the newborn, causes and remedies. In the first few months of life, bowel problems in the newborn are commonplace. Newborn babies stipsis, constriction, dyschezia and infant gas colic. In this video, I explain what they are, why they are created and most importantly, what remedies and massages that you yourself can do to improve them. Before I continue though, let me introduce myself. My name is Matteo Silva. I am a neonatal osteopath and founder of Yule, a maternal infant center in the province of Monza and Brianza, in which I collaborate closely with all the main health figures in the field, such as pediatricians and obstetricians, visiting only newborns from their first days of life. You can find me online in this YouTube channel, which I highly recommend you subscribe to now to stay updated on all new videos. You can find me on Instagram under the name Osteopath Silva Matteo, and especially on my website www.matteosilvaosteopatha.com, where you will find hundreds of videos and exclusive content to foster the best development of your baby from birth to independent walking. Now let's cut to the chase and get to the heart of the topic of this video. Let's go in order of the intensity of the problem. And we will then talk about dyskasia, constipation and gassy colic of the newborn. Infant dyskasia. The term infant dyskasia refers to a functional disorder manifested by particularly difficult defecation possibly associated with gas emissions and or tummy ache, usually mild. Please note, the term functional disorder means not caused by organic disease, but this does not mean that it is normal and one should resign oneself to having it, quite the contrary. It is often said that the main cause of infant dyskasia is the lack of coordination between the pelvic floor muscles the anal sphincter in the colon, then the intestines. Spoiler, this is false and I will explain the real cause and remedies of dyskesia in a few minutes. So I suggest you follow the video to the end. Usually little importance is given to infant dyskesia because it tends to resolve on its own. But in the first few months of life, an infant suffering from dyskesia may present with pain due to difficulty pooping and the sensation of intestinal blockage, albeit momentary. So why let the baby suffer when dyskasia can be resolved? In cases of dyskasia, although the stool may be soft and physiological, the infant may struggle to poop. The diagnosis of dyskasia is made in the case of an infant younger than 6 to 9 months of age who has difficulty evacuating, so perhaps crying, flushing, irritability, gas, but nevertheless manages to discharge with dead stools. What are the causes and remedies for dyskasia? I'll tell you in a few minutes, but first let's understand the difference between dyskasia and stipsostipsia. Terms that mean the same thing, of course. After that, I'll explain the causes and what the best remedies are. Even maybe I'll be able to mention a belly rub. Constipation and constipation of the newborn. Constipation and constipation of the newborn are two synonyms that indicate the baby's difficulty in evacuating, that is, difficulty in pooping and emptying totally or partially the neck, then the final part of the intestine. Constipation and constipation are found in about 5 to 7% of infants, but more generally, it is estimated that infants suffering from gastrointestinal disorders in the first few months of life can be as high as about 35%. The term infant constipation refers to difficulty evacuating associated with constipation, that is an infant who does not poop for at least perhaps two, three or four days. The stool consistency in cases of constipation may be soft or slightly harder. More easily constipated infants are artificially breastfed, but breastfed infants can also suffer from constipation. Constipation can cause the baby to experience symptoms such as belly pain crying, irritability, swollen abdomen and reduced appetite. These symptoms should improve following evacuation, but in particularly constipated children, they may linger as a symptomology similar to gas colic. Constipation is not an organic disease, thus a pathology, but is defined as a functional disorder. That should improve as the months go by. 
But even then, why let the child suffer when constipation can be solved? Usually the most commonly used remedies for constipation and constipation in the newborn are lactic ferments, spoilers, which are often insufficient to resolve it, or we find the feeding tube, or for example microclimates. Unfortunately, these remedies are symptomatic, but they do not really solve the cause why the baby has become constipated. On the contrary, they often make the situation worse. Inserting a rectal tube or using a microclism that facilitates evacuation do not solve the cause why the child has a bellyache and has become constipated. But on the contrary, they disabuse him to discharge independently often. The more we use them, the less the child will learn to poop on his own. Note, they can sometimes be useful for acute episodes of constipation. But to resolve them effectively, we will then need to trace the origin of constipation and tummy pain. Constipation can have both short-term and long-term negative consequences. Increased stool consistency, fatigue to discharge, a bloated abdomen and belly pain associated with painful defecation can trigger a vicious cycle whereby the baby develops gas colic, then crying and pain, as well as a real fear associated with the act of evacuation. I have treated numerous children who have had this great difficulty that is why I fight daily to promptly resolve the infant's constipation. With all care and massage, for example, osteomassage to the newborn. Dyskesia, constipation and constipation. So what are the causes and remedies? In order of severity, dyskesia, constipation and constipation, then gas colic, are caused by an inflammatory bowel picture that is milder, moderate and marked. This is why the child has a stomach ache, intestinal transit is altered, he is airy and crying. Dyskasia, constipation and colic are not caused by intestinal immaturity because an immature intestine can give pain, nor by the baby's failure to coordinate the release of the anal sphincter. This is proven beyond a shadow of a doubt by a recent scientific study from 2018 called Infantile Colic, New Insights into an Old Problem published in the journal Gastroenterology Clinics of North America. I'll leave the link below in description. When the intestinal inflammation is mild, the infant begins to have the first belly pains, gasping for air and struggling to poop. The infant begins to present with those symptoms related to the term infant dyschesia. If the inflammatory picture continues over weeks and gradually worsens, the infant may perhaps even become constipated. This happens because the inflamed intestine alters its peristaltic capacity, thus its intestinal dumbness. It creates bloating, air and pain. The longer this inflammatory picture is maintained, the more the infant becomes disaccustomed to regular bowel transit. And despite the fact that dyskesias are put into practice, the infant can also discharge independently. That's why if your baby suffers from dyskesia or constipation, I advise you to resolve them as soon as possible. When the inflammatory picture is pronounced, the infant begins to suffer from what is then called gaseous colic. Gas colic, a generic term for abdominal pain, are an alteration of intestinal transit associated with air and are then often associated with dyskesia and constipation. Therefore, what are the remedies for these issues? Only in light of the true causes of dyskesia, constipation and colic can we know the remedies for drop belly and all these issues. Thus, one, if the infant is breastfed, it is essential to investigate and improve maternal nutrition. Inescapable. We talked about this topic in an article on my blog and in the video course Curing Gas Colic that we recorded together with my colleague, nutritionist who specializes precisely in pregnancy and breastfeeding because the mother's nutrition during pregnancy is also essential. Then too, if the baby is artificially breastfed, the type of formula can be evaluated. How the baby is proposed, so the baby's position, the type of bottle teeth, the type of bottle, and so much more. Before I go any further, I will reiterate. Obviously, I am mentioning them to you now. In the course Cure and Prevention of Gas Colic, I explain them in much more depth than I could in a simple YouTube video. Now let's move on to what is the third point. So in order to treat these issues, you always have to evaluate the mobility of the thoracic and pelvic diaphragm, 
because they play a very important role in gastric disbudding and bowel peristalsis. For example, very often there are severe limitations in children caused by intrauterine malpositions or picotoso delivery. Fourth, we need to evaluate the presence of tension at the level of the gastric and intestinal smooth muscles that create pain for the baby and slow down transit. To notice this, one only has to palpate the baby's abdomen, which is very often much harder. And that's why I always teach the parents of my young patients and in the course Cure and Prevention of Gas Colic, osteopathic massage to the infant's belly, which I call osteomassage. Then you also have to evaluate the presence of any tension in the neck and back which in any case could bother the baby and make him irritable parallel to however colic and dyskesia to constipation. Finally, many other parameters need to be evaluated that you find in the course care and prevention of colic and gastroesophageal reflux. So for example, maternal supplements, those of the baby, microbiota, maternal and family psychophysical state and so on. Saying, with these last sentences, this video has come to an end. It has been a pleasure to create this informative content for you and I sincerely hope that it can be of great help for the well-being of your baby. If you enjoyed this video, I ask you to leave a like. It costs you nothing but it is really worth a lot to me. To subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on my Instagram profile Osteopath Silva Mateo. To then visit me on the website MatteoSilvaOsteopatha.com See you in the next video.